Hello and welcome to Hixie Studio. In this video I am going to show you how to make this cute little watercolour card and I am using Elizabeth Craft Designs the Garden Party Clear Stamps and I'm not you can see I'm not using all the bits I'm using the little girl I'm using the cat and I'm using the blossom um, there is another video on the uh, the channel where I Got, uh, I've used the, the window and the, the lanterns if you want to have a look at that. So what uh, the other thing I'm going to be using are um, the Faber Aqua from uh, the gold Faber Aqua from Faber Castell. Bit of a mouthful. Um, so yeah, so just I've just got the 12 um, pack here, and I'm going to show you that you can mix colours. Um, that you don't just have to go with the, the colours that are in here. Okay, because obviously we need a, a skin tone um, and uh, I mixed that little purple uh, as well. And then we, I just added the background and I can feel I've got a little bit of blue on there, which is why there's that little patch. I'm going to leave it, otherwise I'm going to just have got in my box. Right, okay, let's, let's start. So the first thing I've got, I've got a piece of um, card and I have just used stamping card. It isn't watercolour card per se but I'm not using tons and tons of water um, and, and completely saturating the card so you can get away with it um, you can use watercolour card uh, if you want I'm using watercolour card for mixing the colours I'm using it like a palette which I will show you shortly now I know that I want to cut it out with this particular die so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself like a <coughs> Frame of reference. I'm just going to place the die down and just literally draw um, corners. You can just go with the whole, you know, have it the original size, but I kind of like to to have a little bit of um, leeway of fiddling around with things. So put the die to one side for a moment, uh, and then we need to get our stamps out. So um, I've already put my stamps onto this sheet so and the other thing I need is my stamping platform again that will help me with um, positioning things so I'm going to um, I'm going to put it up in the corner um, I'm just going to put a couple of uh, the magnets in the corners for the moment until I oop, position where I want my oop, <laughs> that's a weird sound position where I want my um, stamp so I have my little girl and remember I've got that kind of frame of reference as well and I want her towards the bottom um, so we've got the sky at the top and I can put my uh, sentiment here so I've got the little girl and then I've got this cute little cat and uh, okay so I'm going to see I need to, to just shuffle her over a little bit and, and try and get them fairly level Quite sticky, so sticking to my hand. Can't move them up just a little tad. Okay, and then I'm going to bring my platform over, and they're now in place. And the other thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to just pop a magnet up in that corner because it's not going to interfere with where I want uh, to stamp. Uh, I am going to stamp and uh, emboss just because I like the effect of it. Um, if you use a, a waterproof uh, ink. It doesn't matter that the ink won't move, but I quite like the effect of um, the emboss. So I'm going to use a uh, Versafine clear to stamp with, and then I've got a clear embossing powder to go on the top. Right, so let's ink up the stamps and uh, make sure that nicely inked, nicely inked, but not like squidged. On, I, I'm and I'm probably the worst person for, for, for saying that because I'm I'm a bit of a I have to get enough ink on and I do squidge a bit. Okay, so I have the the platform this way because I find it easier to put pressure on. Obviously, because I don't on camera really want to stand up. I don't have to. Just make sure you go over every part with a bit of pressure. But obviously, if I take this off and it's not all stamped, then it's not an issue. But look at that beautiful 
beautiful beautiful and before i do anything else oops, sorry about that crash i am going to put my um embossing powder over and i also just realized that i didn't um i didn't put my anti sasset bag over that piece of card so that could prove to be a little bit of an issue in a minute but we'll have a look and see i am terrible for remembering to do those things after the um I'm just putting a bit of paper in purely because there's probably still ink on that and I'm not going to sort those out till after. Right, so let's have a look and let's see if uh, how we're doing. I don't think, I don't think we're too bad in terms of having powder in the wrong place, so I think we might have got away with it. The um, Generally, if it's clear embossing powder, it's not going to be too much of an issue. But however, what will happen is if I've got it inside the image, it will repel any of the watercolour that I try to do. So um, you do just need to be a little bit aware of that. Um, if it's a colour and it's in the wrong place, then it's, it's quite obvious. Now, I'm just allowing my um, heat gun to heat up a little bit. Uh, before I uh, actually emboss, if you've never seen embossing before, it's kind of a bit like magic. You put the heat on and it basically melts the powder and it comes, you can see that it's changing, it's becoming, you can see the black underneath. Once it's changed, move your um, heat gun on. Don't hold it in the same place for too long because you can already see the card is slightly bowing. So we don't want uh, to have the heat on the card for any longer than, than uh, we need to. So what I'm just going to do, I'm just checking that I got all the powder. Because sometimes you can miss a little bit and then when you go to paint, I might have missed a bit on a hair actually. I'm just going to put the... I don't know, Okay. Particularly if, if you're using an ink that isn't waterproof, um, because that's another a good use of um, embossing powder. Now I can feel now, I obviously had quite a bit up here, but that will just add some nice texture into our sky uh, when we come to do that. Right, so um, the first thing I'm going to do is, is paint uh, ooh, the, the cat uh, and the little girl. And uh, I'm going to so I'll try and follow these colours just to show you um, how. Now that I made a few a few little ugh on this. Can you see here? You can see my pencil mark. And that's because I went back in with the pencil when it was still wet. And I found I found with these pencils that if you do that, that's what happens. You cannot get rid of those marks. So just be a little bit careful um, about going onto something wet and that's where I will show you how to I use this is my this is the palette I used literally scribbled onto here to create my colours or to get more colour to go onto there rather than putting the pencils on. However that said um, I am going to start by adding some colour with the pencils because this is by far and away the easiest way to add colour to um, with the pencils. So I'm I'm not colouring the whole thing, otherwise she, the, the cat would be very, very dark. I'm just adding a little bit of colour that I will use the water to sort of pull out shortly. Okay, so a bit there. I'm doing a bit down here. It's a tiny bit under the chin because there's a bit of a shadow that will come there. A little bit again round the side of the, um, the front paws or the paws a little bit here on the tail because that's where you'll get the shadow and then when I get the brush on it in a moment I'll draw that colour out that's the point at which I felt oh I need more colour went back in with a pencil and so what what I will do if I need to do that I'll scribble on here get the colour and go back in okay so I've got the the black down for the cat uh, and for the girl's hair I used two browns. Let's move that up a minute. I used two browns. So where 
Now this is quite embossed at the top, so it's not so easy to get the colour in there. So I'm doing the darker brown, sort of around the side of the headband and at the top, sort of where the, the more the, the shadow is more on, I think it's called the crown of the head. Um, and then I am just adding some of the lighter colour at the bottom just to just to give a bit of difference, just to give it a, a nice sort of hi a highlight if you like. Okay. The other colours then uh, that I have used straight on will we'll get on as well. I used the lighter blue for her pinafore. And again, so I've just gone a little bit round here. See, I'm not colouring the whole thing. I'm putting the colour on where the shadows would be and then pulling it out from there so you've got this little line here that's showing the fold so that would have a little bit hidden by the pockets and again we can go back in with a bit more colour if we want the purple I'm going to mix uh, and I'll show you how to do that in a bit let's see what else have we used I used the um, this pinky colour on there and on a headband and what else did we use I think we used, I used that red on this flower again I'm not colouring it in completely because on these flowers I'm making them red and the daisies yellow so yellow in there I will say that my pencils aren't particularly sharp and because of the embossing there's only tiny, tiny little areas that I can get into, and then I'm going to use dark green for the leaves. Okay, so for the moment, we're going to go ahead with that. So I'm going to bring my water in, I'm going to move that one out of the way, um, and I'm going to bring in my fine brush, and I do need a piece of kitchen paper with me. Because what I don't want to be doing is flooding this with water. Okay, so I'm just getting my brush wet, making sure it's clean, because I have a tendency not to, to do that. So we're going to start with the girl's hair and literally going in and moving that colour and blending that dark in with the lighter. A little bit more water. Okay, so blending that colour in for the hair. And then give that brush a good rinse and then just wipe it off. And then I'm just going to bring that pink down to her hair band there. And I'm breaking a rule, well not breaking the rule, but doing something that should try to avoid just try to avoid working on areas next to areas that are already wet so i should have waited to do that so i'm going to come over here and i'm going to do the cap now we're going to just go in and move that color that we added i think i've been um less heavy-handed this time i did feel like last time i was going to end up with a very very black cap which is not what i wanted so uh, and I've realised I've missed, I've missed the cat's nose. So we'll go back in and do her nose in a minute. So moving that colour down. Because this is um, not watercolour card, you have to be careful because it is grabbing the water quite quickly. So you need to make sure that you've got enough to move the colour around. And I might want to go and re revisit this in a bit um, but we'll see there we go so it's moving all of that around so it picks up the colour where you've coloured it and then um, you get this uh, you can move it to where you want it and I will just go over here she's just got a slightly lighter in there okay so that's we'll leave that to dry for a little bit go back and do the flowers in a moment and we'll do her pinafore 
again make sure you get enough water on the brush to move the colour. So I do think I've been much more restrained with the colours um, this time. But that's looking it's looking okay. Okay. So I can do her shoes because they're not next to anything. And then we'll do the flowers. Like I say, it's not too tricky. If you've got a little bit of colour in the right place, then and you can move it then to uh completely fill in whatever it is that you're painting so some yellow and daisies okay and right so now we want to look um i'm just going to put a little bit of this down here um to pick up to do the cat's nose so you can see i've just colored it on i'm literally just going in and i've now got that color on my brush i can now use it's using it a little bit like a palette because if I had watercolour pens and I'd be able to scribble them onto a tile and use them but these are pencils they're not going to scribble onto a, a non-porous surface like that so use your um your card right so two things then we need to mix we want to mix uh, skin colour and we want to mix the purple so skin colour is uh, and I will use the lighter one, didn't I? Those are the colours you need to make a, a skin tone. Uh, and you might think, really? Yeah, you do. Um, and it's just about a case of getting the combination of them right. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of the, the brown down and then I'm going to put some of the yellow on top and then some of the red on the top of that. And then I'm going to get my pen, pen, my pencil, and I'm going to blend them in. Now, you see now if I go on, I've now got, she might be a little bit yellow on this one, but we can go back in and, and uh, amend that later. But that, those are the three colours that you need to use to get a um, skin tone. I might put too much water on to begin with, mix this too much and not now be able to, oh I can just about pick up. Yeah, I think she's a little bit yellow. So what I'm going to do on here, not on there, is I'm going to put in a little bit more red here. And then go back in and then give it a little bit more warmth rather than being jaundiced. <laughs> She's got a little bit more of a glow now. So those, that's how you would do your um, your uh, flesh colour. And that's that's in any medium. So I do that with my watercolour paints, my acrylics, whatever medium I'm using. Those are the, the colours that I would use for making a flesh tone. Okay, so... If you don't, if you, if you don't, even with your alcohol markers, if you don't have a flesh tone, then you can blend those colours to make um, them. The other thing I made then was the purple. So I used, because this was too pink and I wanted a more, a, a sort of a, a bluey purple. So I used the red and the dark blue. And again, you can see I did it here. So literally I've laid down some red and I'm going to put a little bit more down this time than I did with the skin because I've got a bigger area. And then I'm going over with blue and then I'm getting my water and going in and mixing them. Now that is way, way, way too red. So we're going to next to it, don't go over the top of it because it won't work. I'm going to get some more blue in there. And that is much more, not quite what we had on the other one, but it will, it still suffices. It's more of a grape colour this time. Your purple, you, the kind of purple you end up with completely depends on, you know, the proportion of the red and the blue. So have a look here and you see the difference. I've got way more red in this one and I actually would prefer there to be more blue. So I am, while I've still got uh, 
time I'm going to just take some blue and just see if we can blend that in a little bit yeah brighter purple there we go so yes red and um blue make purple but depending on the particular red the particular blue um depends on the actual outcome and the quantities that you put in so okay right so we are i'm just going to give that a, a, a little bit of a heat love i'm going to put my pencils back in my tin for the moment and put them out of the way so we're not um don't end up with water i didn't um i will need them again in a moment but um for the moment let's just get them out of the way and we'll give this a little bit of a heat blast just to um to make sure that all of this is dry. Okay, so what we're going to do now is to create a um a kind of a, a sort of land because at the moment our little girl and our cat are sort of floating so i'm going to use this as a palette um rather than going on because i found that uh, again when you've drawn a line with these you get tend to get quite a hard line on the paper so i'm just going uh on here with the colors that i want to create the land part okay and i'm going to start with the darker Green. And I'm not going to do all of it because I want some to go back to in a minute. And I'm just going to um, decide where I want my um, land to sort of fall. Oops. Yeah, whoops, I've gone over the um, leaf out a little bit. Okay, and then some more just to blend this down a little bit and down here. So I've got the light slightly on. Let's see. Then I'm going to go in to this green and blend some of that in. I'm struggling to see my pen and there we go, sitting back like that helps. So like I say, this um this card uh, grabs the water and the colour quite quickly. So, the and the but the reason I used it over um, watercolour card is because uh, it's harder to stamp on watercolour card. Much harder because it has a surface to it that is quite tricky to um to stamp onto okay so getting the, our colour in and like so now this is where my um my little registration marks in a way are helping because I can see how far down and across I need to go to make sure that I've covered everything and then I'm just gonna get a little bit of the this brownie colour to kind of round these two. It's kind of like a bit of a, a shadow where they're stood. So again, it makes them look like they're actually stood as opposed to um, just floating on the grass here. And so to give them a little bit of a grounding get back in with some green just, just to try and blend it in a little bit there we go okay so i'm going to give that a little bit of um a blast because uh, we want to do the sky and what i don't want is for the the sky and the grass to become completely uh, Nick, yeah. 
just going on the back because it does help um to, to uh, flatten the cog back out the other way okay so now i'm going to do the the sky in a, a different way i'm going to um i'm going to put the blue down but i'm going to want in a minute now i, I won't throw this away because i've still got color here and here and here there's there's um there's always bits that you can go back in most of this is used up but you know there's always bits you can go back in so don't um sort of waste it right so this time what i'm doing is i'm actually again um remember that it, this grabs the, the water quite quickly so it won't stay particularly wet but i'm putting water down to make the card wet before i try adding my um my blue for my sky okay so i'm coming down here now we need to come in here yeah this is where having the um the embossing really helps okay so then i'm going to get some of my blue and just start adding in to that water now it doesn't need to be um perfect because it helps sort of to give that uh, impression of clouds if it's sort of a little bit sort of wispy so don't worry too much if you get bits that seem to stop and start and you can see i've got my piece of um, card on its side because i know i want to i find it easier particularly as i'm going around things to work this way um but that's a a personal kind of preference so it's picking up the blue and going in and blue and blue up here and then some down here so and then we want some down in here And again, those little sort of marks that I made help me to know where whereabouts I need to get everything to go. Okay, right, so we've got our little image um, complete. I can put those to the side and I am going to give this another little blast. Uh, now, I've said this on other videos when I've been using water on things and, and heat set in and things broke. So you can see the cards go in. That at home, what I would do is um, when I I would stick this to the 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 piece of card, the mat or whatever, and then um, while the glue was still wet, I would put it under some heavy weights to um, to help to, to straighten it. But obviously, um, I don't have time to do that. So I'm getting my my little um, die back in. And I can use my marks. I've got my plate so I can actually uh, put it on there. So I can see where I'm going to cut. I can put, I don't really want to put too much tape on top of where I've watercolored because um, the tape might have a tendency to stick on if it's still a bit damp and then um, lift up the image or the colors. Just while that's going through, I obviously need to, to sharpen some of my pencils. When you when you sharpen them, keep uh, do it in little pots. So have like a little pot for each colour, and then all the bits of colour of the the actual colour pigment. You keep those in little pots. You can use those for backgrounds. You can drop them on a bit like um, pixie powders or brush shows. Um, there, yeah. It's always worth keeping a hold of those things. It might seem a little bit strange. And yeah, we'll cut it out. That's good. There we have our image all uh, painted. And let's just grab it, our little bits and pieces to create our, our card then. So, we've got our mats and layers, some glue. So I'm going to start by sticking this one 
to this one. And this is what I'm saying. I would put, if I was at home, I'd put a lot of glue on this. I say a lot, like kind of like this. I would put this down onto my mat. And then I, I, mean, I am going to do it just while I'm sticking uh, the other bits on. I would put that under um, something heavy. So I'm just going to put it under my mat for the moment. Uh, and I, yeah, I would put it under something heavy uh, to allow it to dry completely. And that will help to even out some of um, the bowing. I mean, if you can let things dry naturally rather than sticking the heat gun on, then, you know, that's even better. But if you, you know, when you've been embossing like I have, you're, you're already introducing that little kind of um, bow into the uh, the card. So, okay, so trying to find ways to, to deal with it. So stick that little one on at the bottom. Again, while I've just realised one thing I've not done, I have got my little, um, the blossom already uh, damped and I'm just going to, Get some water on my brush, and I'm just going to use the blue to go over this, and that then ties that in to the um whoop, to the uh, the rest of the card rather than being sort of white. This is just woo, woo, away. Leave it there for the moment. And uh, this is still a bit wet. It's a bit too small to hold to, um, you know, if I grab my tweezers, I'll just try giving that a little bit of a heat blast and then I can stick that down. Otherwise, if I try and stick this down while the card's wet, it's just, it's just not going to have it. So this is literally just to um, tie in this, the, the sentiment to the rest of the card and I'm just going to glue it onto this piece of card and then I'm going to cut it out with a pair of scissors because it's quite small and um, sometimes trying to do that on your guillotine or your cutter is a little tricky so I'm just literally going to um, cut it like so right Okay, let's uh, bring out this. Oh, not done too bad. Um, and so we're going to use 3D glue gel. Let's put this back on that for a minute. Use 3D glue gel on the back of our little image here. And uh, we will go a little angle here, like so. And then our blossom's going to go on here. Like that. And then I have my little bow and a little pearl to go in the middle just to finish it off. So a little bit of, oh, I've just got a bit of a manky. Hello at the minute, let's get rid of it in there. Oh, there we go. That's off. So it's a little bit of gel there. A little pretty bow on there. And a little tiny pearl. Oops. You actually need to put some glue on there, otherwise it's not going to stick. My little pearl, let me get my wet pencil. A little pearl goes on the top. Yeah. And there we have our lovely little blossom card. So as you can see, um, you, you're you not going to get the same result twice because uh, with the best one in the world, with the pencils, you're never going to mix the colours in exactly the same way. But they're both equally cool. Um, so we used, we used these gorgeous... Um, Garden Party Clear Stamps from Elizabeth Craft Designs with our Gold Faber Aqua Pencils. Uh, have a look on the channel because there is another video where I have used um, 
the other stamps on this uh, sheet and I have used uh, the gorgeous pearlescent watercolour ink from uh, Creative Expressions. Look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Thank you.